Hello all. Uh, this is a follow-up on the QEM uh, creation of uh, virtual machines in uh, Linux, in this case Arch Linux, on the XFCE4 desktop. And uh, just some things that I found out uh, after posting that video uh, where I was, had issues. Uh, so if you haven't watched that video, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, uh, but the idea is to create a QEM uh, virtual machine for Windows, uh, in this case Windows 10. I just downloaded the ISO for the latest build, um, which is uh, here. Uh, 1511 build, uh, single license, not single license, sing single uh, language. So um, you can make a directory in your home folder uh, if you wish to. I just called it QEM. So um, what I suggest to keep things simple is I'll just open this in a new tab and I'll go to QEM, QEMU uh, folder and I'll just drag this into here and close this and just F2 or whatever right click rename just call it win ISO and there we go and it's just for simplicity that's all and then we'll just uh, create the QEM image at least 25 gigs or so uh, so be aware of that if you have a smaller SSD and you don't have much room left and uh, also have QEA, QEMU installed, uh, in this case from Pac-Man in Arch Linux, and probably your other distro, distros will have uh, QEMU packages maybe already installed for you. So, uh, as usual, I don't use a front end for, for this, so I'll just uh, open in a terminal and paste that in. It's done. Okay. Very simple. Allocated as... 25 gigs of raw uh, data on um, space. Now the interesting thing in uh, the Windows 10 at least that I found is if I don't specify the USB tablet during installation and then I try to specify it after it just won't boot properly. It just uh, it's, it's a black screen basically. So uh, as I explained before or maybe you've read on uh, different blogs or guides uh, the QEM system specify in my case I'm gonna it's a 64-bit and then a CD-ROM and as I said try to keep it simple because a lot of this stuff is uh, you know it's hard to remember so you have to write it down such as I did in, in a text document in any case a CD-ROM win ISO here uh, the dash M is uh, 4096 and I found that uh, not specifying M or G or anything like for the like a value such as 25 G just 4096 for gigs uh, seems to work and then enable KVM seems fine and the drive is another parameter I wasn't aware of and that's where you can specify the format as raw then it will take it and not complain and the CPU host CPU is host, so your computer, and how many cores, and also after the cores, you can also specify threads, but I just left it at six cores, and the dash USB device tablet, and then the VGA is STD, okay, I know it's a lot, and it's kind of long-winded, and I said just to write it down, and there's probably better or different methods than what I have here, so again, I'm just going to copy that, and go back to my, uh, my terminal open? No, it's not. Okay. Open the terminal and paste that whole thing in. Fingers crossed that, uh, yeah, there we go. So, if this probably, if you've installed Windows before, this probably looks familiar, of course, with the Windows logo. So, you have to give this a little bit of time to start. So, I'll be back when this is ready to go. Okay, so we're at this, this Windows setup screen, and it just installed just like you would on your, uh, on your hardware, and you wait for the setup is starting and so on and when you get to the screen uh, I don't have a key so just uh, I don't have a product key so you just click that give it some time and accept the license agreement and custom install of course and unallocated space is the 25 gigs we 
uh, did in the basic raw image creation. Next. And that's it. Windows will just uh, start installing. And the main reason for this is just to sum up some observations I had from the last video and some other observations about Windows 10 itself in a virtual machine. Okay, so after uh, shutting down uh, the Windows 10, uh, you have to restart it again without the uh, ISO uh, CD-ROM, of course. And these are the parameters on the screen. And I'm going to leave out the sound hardware because it just won't work. And for some reason, each time I uh, do this, it crashes the first time. And then second time, run the command, it seems to work again. So I'll just take a second to see if that's going to be the case. Yep. Okay, so just run the command again. <laughs> and I don't know why that's happening. And uh, let Windows 10 boot up inside the uh, QEMU virtual machine, which is now, well, it doesn't want, this is raw, so uh, it's not dynamic. There we go. Okay, so I've disabled the sound. And uh, what I wanted to actually... Uh, one of the main things is to look at it was the activation of Windows 10 and how it works or how it doesn't work or how it's supposed to work. Uh, this is the latest one, you know, major updates. So if you press the Windows key, hold the Windows key and press pause. It should bring up the system properties. You notice here it says uh, Windows is activated. I'm not sure what that means other than that it's activated. Um, I guess I could do create my online account that I use on my system and see how that works. And I actually didn't really download Windows Home, which is it doesn't matter really for this for these purposes. But I I just found that interesting at least to say the least. And uh, as a guess, like a rough guess, is uh, Windows 10 being uh, well more so device uh, and hardware ID uh, good or bad thing um, once it grabs your hardware ID maybe you don't have to activate Windows anymore it just automatically is activated once it has your hardware so it's looking at my main system if it is indeed looking at my main system then this is looked at as another device so it will activate it that's a wild guess and speculation. I have no idea. I haven't looked in it, into it very much. However, I know there is confusion over Windows activation, period. Windows 10, that is. Um, I believe you can run a DirectX, uh, the D DirectX diagnostic tool, I think. There it is, run command. Uh, sure, let's see if it's digitally signed and uh, take a gander. And memory is the four gigs you can see, and page file is okay. Display everything says it's accelerated, and oh, there we go. It says I have to switch here to zoom in. There we go. Approximately uh, two gigs of video memory total, I guess. And look at this, C, C BIOS, which is uh, mentioned quite a bit when you want to do the VGA pass-through and stuff. So I, I imagine that's what it's, obviously that's what it's taking. And basic Microsoft Display Adapter. And speaking of VGA pass-through, uh, I tried to do that, but unfortunately, uh, I think my motherboard is borked in that way. Uh, since the IOMMU is getting a kernel error, and I know from after warranty ran out, the onboard LAN stopped working. So I think everything is uh, not too happy. And even worse, you see that driver model here would be 1.3. I'm not sure what it is if you have the a higher end graphics card. But I know if you have two uh, GeForce cards in Windows 10, it will drop down to a lower driver model and use the lower one. For me, anyway, it used the lower uh, version, which was in GT8600, and I have a 
G, uh, GeForce uh, 970, but it was using the much lower uh, um, graphics card, the older one, I guess as a compromise, and I think that's a Windows 10 specific thing. So in pursuit of gaming on Windows without dual booting, I have to either get I'd probably get a new motherboard. That would be the case, more than likely. And hopefully maybe one with the onboard graphics. And it is an AMD motherboard, so maybe Radeon graphics on board for a Linux, the Linux desktop and the uh, 970, NVIDIA 970 for the uh, graphics uh, for the game, for gaming, if I ever get around to doing that. And you can also run the... Uh, the Windows Experience Index through the command line, so, oh dear, CMD, run as administrator, yes, it, actually you can see here it's fairly responsive, so we just type in WinSAT, and sometimes this fails too, so WinSAT.exe, uh, formal, the word formal, and then dash at F dash V, and we'll just see what happens. Um, I'll pause the recording while this is going through. Alright, uh, it, it did actually uh, went through, which is uh, kind of neat. And uh, there's a GUI. I'll just use Edge default browser. Uh, win, it's on WinArrow. Uh, W-E-I tool. There it is. Alright, so there it is there. I'll allow this to run. Just give you an idea. Oh, there we go. 3.4. Uh, sometimes it's 3.8, but, you know, graphics, desktop, graphics performance is 3.4. But, I mean, it's there. It's actually measurable. And the rest is not that bad, actually. Uh, desktop graphics, uh, not gaming, but, or gaming it says, 9.9. These probably aren't accurate, but it gives you an idea, I guess. Um, so what else? Uh... As far as the resolution, you can uh, display settings and go through advanced display and say make it uh, another resolution such as, an, an, just bump it up a little, click apply. It, it does work. However, if you try to uh, scale this to like this, uh, you notice that it's all stretched. Or uh, more like if you grab the side of the window and if I can get it I found that uh, certain themes in Linux uh, um, or whatever the way the mouse is it's very hard to grab this okay let's try a control alt resize okay okay it's a little stretched right uh, all you do is I believe is control alt u there we go so control alt u on your keyboard will bring it back to the whatever resolution the uh, guest is using. So let's go to accounts. Uh, let's look at accounts and sign in. I'm going to see if this works. And I'll have to pause the recording while I put in my credentials. We'll see what it does though. And I'll be back in a second. Okay. Uh, it says uh, from here on out you'll unlock this device using either the password for your Microsoft account or if you have one set up by your PIN that way you can get help from Cortana you can find your device if you lose it well, <laughs> okay uh, it just sounds funny I'm sorry and uh, your settings will automatically sync to make sure it's really you, you you'll need to your current Windows password one last time next time you sign into Windows you will see your Microsoft account password Use, I'm sorry, use. If you don't have a password, Windows password, just leave the box blank and select next. So I'm not sure what to do here. Well, I'm just going to click next because I don't want to fill in the password. Let's see what happens. Okay, so maybe I'll just uh, reboot and we'll see what happens. Okay, after rebooting, I signed in with my Microsoft account and I don't know if anything's going to happen, but it's going to sync anything that my settings are. Uh, Looks like my email box is working. Control pause. Says it's activated. This is really interesting.
All right, so uh, I just manually changed some settings, and uh, usually I like to, if out of interest, if, if your interest is, uh, I set my uh, uh, turn this off or hidden. Thank you. There we go. We don't need that. <laughs> and what's that other thing? Yeah, we don't need that. All we have to do is start typing Notepad. And there's your notepad. All right, so just out of interest, uh, I just randomly Tiny Troopers game as mobile and PC. Ouch. Windows G something. I don't know. Uh, uh yeah, um, no. <laughs> what happens if I say no? Oh, okay. Is this signing in or is it signing? What happens when I click campaign? Hey, not bad. Like, considering. Uh, left click on the ground to move. Uh, oh, we're gonna move here. <sighs> uh, go to the next part. Well, by all accounts, it's a little, it's playable. There's a bit of screen tearing and stuff, and fire. <laughs> really? Okay, enough of this. Can I just close this app and say goodbye? Yeah, I can. Goodbye. Good enough. So there you go. Uh, Windows 10 in QEM. I don't think you can go full screen mode in QEM. I don't remember. If if you do, if you know how to, let me know. I know you can go the resolution of your desktop, but like true full screen, I, I'm not sure. All right, so... Uh, this is an out-of-interest uh, type of video, obviously, and uh, take from it what you will. And uh, please feel free to add any comments or suggestions on, on uh, what I've talked about here. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon, and bye for now.